Hi. Now, I'm assuming you watched my earlier video in this series on hyperbolic functions where I showed you the definitions of shine x, cosh x and than x. And in this video, what I want to do is now go on to show you what the graphs of these three functions look like. And you'll notice that they're all based on e to the power x. So we're going to work with that particular function. And here's the graph then of y equals e to the power x. You'll notice in cosh x we've got e to the power x plus e to the power minus x. So we need the function e to the minus x. So if I was to replace x with minus x, we get a reflection of this graph in the y-axis. So we end up with y equals e to the minus x looking like this. We're also going to be working with the graph minus e to the power minus x in the function shine x. And that is a reflection of e to the minus x in the x-axis. So we're going to get a graph looking something like this. Now let's start with the function shine x. If we were to build this graph up, one way that we could look at this is to look at the graphs of e to the power x, okay, and to this add the graph of minus e to the minus x, this graph here. So I'm going to superimpose these two graphs on the same axis and it's going to look something like this. Now because we're dividing by 2, we're taking the mean of the y values of each of these graphs. For instance, this is 1 here and this is negative 1 here on the y-axis. If we were to add 1 and minus 1 together and divide by 2, we get 0. Okay. If we were to carry on and take the mean then of all the y values, we're going to get a graph passing through the origin looking something like this. I'll just draw it on for you. And this would be the graph of y equals shine x. If I just separate it out, it's going to look like this, y equals shine x. And we can do much the same kind of thing when it comes to looking at the graph of cosh x. It's the mean of the two graphs, e to the power x, okay, and e to the power minus x. So if we superimpose those on the same axis, we get something like this, both passing through the one here. So if we were to do the mean of 1 and 1, 1 and 1 is 2, divide by 2, we're going to get 1. So we end up with the graph of y equals cosh x passing through this point here, and it's going to look something like this, okay, the mean of our y values. And again, if I superimpose it on, here we go. And separating it out, there's our graph, y equals cosh x then. Now when it comes to than x, well this is handled slightly differently. Than x is shine x divided by cosh x, and if I divide these two functions by one another, the twos cancel one another out, and we end up with e to the power x minus e to the minus x, all divided by e to the power x plus e to the minus x. Now for this, we look at the behaviour of x as it gets larger and smaller. So as x gets larger, just put this down, okay, gets larger, what happens to, say, the term e to the power minus x. Well, we can see that that tends to zero. So both these two terms here are going to tend to zero. So you've got e to the power x over e to the power x, which is basically going to be 1. So e to the minus x tends to zero, and that means that the function than of x tends towards 1. Now what happens as x gets smaller? Okay, takes on negative values. Well, the term this time, e to the power x, if we look at the graph, we can see that 
as x gets smaller, e to the power x tends to zero. So these two terms here are going to tend to zero, leaving us with minus e to the power minus x divided by e to the minus x. Well, these two terms are going to be the same, and we're just going to have minus 1 then. So e to the power x this time tends to 0, and that means that the function tan of x tends towards negative 1. So we've also got the fact that when x equals 0, the top here becomes 1 minus 1, so that's 0, divided by 1 plus 1. 0 divided by 2 is 0. So this graph is going to pass through the origin. So putting those ideas together, what we get is this graph for y equals than x. It goes through the origin, and as x gets larger, it tends towards 1. An asymptote, OK? So I'll just mark that asymptote in there as a dotted line. And we notice that as x gets smaller, than x tends towards minus 1. So minus 1 is also an asymptote. So I hope that's given you an idea then on how we go about drawing these three graphs, these three hyperbolic functions, shine x, cosh x, and than x. So do try and commit these graphs to memory because you're going to need to use them later.